Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another Elden Ring boss guide, and this time we're doing Morgot. Um, uh, the first boss where I feel like this is where you can feel the difficulty levels, like, rise. Significantly rise, actually. Um, uh, he's a complex boss. I might not be able to explain it in detail in this guide, since I don't want to make it too long. Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, our equip. We have a plus 12 hook claw uh, for the bleed with uh, the Ash Horfrost Stomp. Everybody's using it these days. It's super OP. It helps you. You have a little bit of range. You get the Frostbite on top. It is super good. Um, the shield is called the Turtle Shield. It increases stamina recovery. This is the Blue Dancer Charm. It's the equivalent for Flynn's Ring. The lower your equip load, the higher your damage. Uh, this is Pontiff's right eye, basically. It's called the Winged Talisman. Um, more claw attacks, consecutive attacks, uh, increase the damage. That's not super good, but it helps a little bit. This is the um, Feathered Talisman, I believe it's called. It is the equivalent for Karthus Blood Ring. It gives you extra iframes, but also you take more damage, which is not necessary since we try to no-hit the game. And this is the Red uh, Feathered Branch Sword Talisman, which is basically Red Tear Stone Ring. Increased your damage by 20%. Let's go right into the fight. And I will go and try to um, talk along the fight and what you can and cannot do. I might pause the video in between a little bit, but we have to start. Otherwise, this video will be way too long. I have to speak a little quicker. What you want to do at the beginning is going through the fog wall. And then you enter the fight. Uh, don't attack right away. He uh, he has like a various uh, uh, amount of attacks he can start with. This is very good. Dodge the blade. Run backwards. You don't have to roll backwards. Just run backwards a little bit. And as soon as he slams, you can just do a Horforce Stomp and you will hit him. Um, after two Horforce Stomps, he will uh, he will be chill bit. Um, frost bitten. So he receives extra damage. And then you have to wait a little or reset that frost with a hit. Uh, if you have a fire infused weapon, you can also re re uh, remove the frost, uh, the chill effect, and then you can do it again. It's very powerful. As you can see here, it does now 50, almost 1500 damage to him. Um, these attacks are really good. I was too slow since I did a Horfrost Stomp here, and I shouldn't have done that. That roll must have been like Karthus Blood Ring. No, I'm sorry. I made actually all the way to him. Uh, if he throws a lance like that, you can just run up to him and hit him like once or even twice if you know exactly what he is capable of doing after. Because he has a variety of attacks after. In this uh, uh, particular case, I could just do it for free because at this around this point, he starts... A little face transition, I would say. You can utilize this uh, by uh, using your melee attacks and a little bit of a bleed effect if you have enough uh, damage. And if you're quick enough, of course. Uh, he always does this. He summons like knives or blades. Uh, and then you have to like lock off, just check the surroundings and run to a spot where there are no knives. Then he keeps attacking you. You just keep rolling these attacks. And this is a very good one. Um, now you can just roll into that and just hit him twice or even three times because now he face transitions and as you can see we also got the bleed. I will hit him like two or three times more and then you have to bail out like you have to run far, far away because this does a lot of damage. You can roll it. I tried to roll it. It works. You can iframe the face transition but the problem is these pools they spawn random. Like, they can spawn random around him in phase transition. And uh, you have to be far away to just check where they spawn. Because they all do damage. And also in phase, like in phase 2, there are random pools spawning in the arena. You can hear them. And you can also see them. But if they spawn like right below you or right behind you or whatever, then you can be really unlucky with those. That's what I'm trying to say, basically. And what you want to do, or what I want to do, is get close enough to get, like, Horfrost stomps in. Because you can stomp twice. I tried it here, but I wasn't... Oh, I actually got him, like, once at least. That's good. He He's chill-bitten again. 
And what, what we now need to do is basically, we just want to wait. Either we get this attack, you can, you can also roll this away and Horfrost stomp him again. But I try to get like another bleed proc. Um, you can hit him twice there, as you did in phase one. Uh, these attacks are quick. Uh, a moment he starts like these, these uh, I don't even know what it's called, these sick moves. Um, uh, what you technically don't want to do, or what I, what I tend to not do anymore, sometimes I still do it, rolling with this attack. Because you could technically punish him once here. And then roll this attack. But that's extremely fucking tight. And I really don't want to do it any longer. Um, it's possible. But it's it's a very tight timing. And it obviously also depends on the weapon you use. If it's possible or not. Um, uh, also when he does these attacks. And you're a little bit closer. Just run up to him. Because he cannot hit you when you're, when you're right below him. Uh, so you get like a free hit in. And then you bail out again. Um, but you have to be confident to be able to to dodge uh, his attacks. Uh, as you can see, a pool spawns to the right. We were pretty lucky here. Um, in phase two, it's not only um, blade into hammer slam. It's like a swinging attack. So you have to roll the first one and then immediately run away. And then after like he does the whirl, he slams. And then you can do another Horfrost. This is what he runs up to you and he wants to like he wants to uh, 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 grab you with the weapon or something. Uh, it's like a blood attack. He has like two or three different blood attacks. You can roll into him because uh, you have a little bit of time. I think I decided to roll into it and just kill him. Uh, but if he's not that low, you can roll into it and like punish him twice and then try to bail out again. But again, you have to be careful what he does. In that particular case, I couldn't do it because I could was able to kill him. Um, uh, he has two more blood attacks, which you also can roll, but these are harder to roll because it's a it's it's a two instance attack basically. You uh, he he charges at you. He he swipes his blade and then after it's a little bit like Logarius. I don't know if you guys fought Logarius in phase two. Logarius he also has this. Um, uh, he attacks you and then the attacks explode midair, and it's the same here with these blood attacks. He attacks you and then uh, shortly after the ex the attack explodes midair, and you have to roll the actual blade and then roll on it close to him. And then the ex attack explodes behind you, and then you have to do it again. It is hard to explain, but it is possible to dodge both. Uh, I recorded a second fight, uh, just to have like a little bit of more footage to, to talk over. Um, uh, the same start again. Wait for his... Uh, this move, for example, also punishable. Uh, you have to wait for him to see if he follows up. He can follow this up if you're too close, so wait and see. And if he doesn't, you can do this. And you run up to him and give him like the smack. And you dodge this again. You can also like four for stomp him again if you want. The double dodge. This is really good RNG. Uh Horf for stomp him again. He's going to yeah, he's going to do the face transition thing. And now we do the same stuff again. We wait for our moment to face transition him now. And we can do this with this attack right here. Yeah, give him the bleed. Exactly. And then bail out. Boom, and now see where the pools spawn. Boom. Boom. And stop. Wait for the follow-up. No follow-up. Boom. Another one. Dodge. Dodge into it. Then you have a little bit more space, as you can see. Um, uh, this is like a where he runs up to you, and then at the very end, he just like slams the spear into your, into your direction. I just roll it to the side. Not a problem. I don't know if it's punishable. Maybe it is. I didn't try, to be honest. And maybe you can also roll into the spear. Um, probably possible. Uh, wait for the follow-up. The potential follow-up. And then just kill the guy. Because the frostbite OP. I know it's a super complex boss fight. And uh, I'm sorry that I was not able to explain every attack in detail. But I hope it helps a little bit. 
Uh, the phase transition unfortunately does a lot of damage and has some kind of a random factor to it, but it's uh, dodgeable and it's obviously also y you can utilize it a little bit by uh, when when you know he's going to phase, you have a little bit of time to to uh, yeah get at least one bleed proc in, and then you can do follow up with another frostbite, and he should be gone. Um, uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm pretty sure there is a, even a better strat. I keep working on these bosses and try to provide more reliable, better strategies within the next upcoming weeks and months. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow already with another boss guide. This time I'll do a Radan one, like a proper Radan one, where we don't get hit and I explain everything. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you guys uh, later on stream or tomorrow in the next video. Bye-bye. <gasps>